Hey, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you guys are located at. I'm actually recording from a new location, and so I wanted to see how this would turn out. Um, And so I am excited. It's been a minute um, since I've come before you guys. And so, yeah, here we are. Um, And so... This has been an interesting week. This has been a week of rest and recouping (laughs) and recovery and um, realigning and re-examining. This has just been a week of so much um, transitioning, learning, growing, um, being fruitful in ways that I may not have acknowledged or appreciated right and so after I made dinner yesterday it was taco Tuesday okay today is Wednesday it was taco Tuesday and I was looking forward to this for a long time Um, I haven't been able to do a taco Tuesday and I love tacos Um, right who doesn't love tacos if you don't I don't know what's I don't know I don't know you don't have to get right with the Lord if you don't like tacos. <laughs> um, they're amazing. And so I like usually go all out for my Taco Tuesday. When I say go all out, like I want the spread. I want the peppers. I want the lettuce. I want the sour cream. I want the cheese. I want the, I prefer shredded chicken. I want the shredded chicken. Um, I want flour tortilla. Um, I, that's just my preference. And um, I want the lime. I want the cilantro. And so I was graced the opportunity to gather these items from the grocery store and cook everything. And just that in itself, um, you know, the ability to cook a meal and then reap the benefit of my labor afterwards. And so even during that process, like I wasn't able to reap the reward of eating what I had made until after everything was done. Um, Now I could have participated in eating part of the meal, you know what I'm saying? Or did a shortcut, like I could have made a quesadilla, right? Because I had the cheese and I had the sour cream and I could have made a veggie uh, quesadilla. But I wanted the taco and I wanted the taco with all the, you know, fixings. So I had to wait until everything was done to reap the benefit of the reward. And so then that got me to thinking of when did this gift start in me to cook? When did this desire birth? And, you know, I was taken back to childhood. And I remember cooking at a very young age, learning how to cook in, um, you know, this home that my family grew up in. And it came about because my mom was making two meals. I grew up a very picky eater. Shout out to all the picky eaters. Okay. Um, Plot twist parents, your children will be okay as they age into adulthood. (laughs) You know, our taste buds change and we discover and grow through things. I'm still a texture eater. So that has not changed. Okay. But just know, parents, that your picky eaters will be okay. They will be a-okay. And they will, you know grow and try things as they get older and discover what it is that they actually like and what it is that they don't like and give you an example I never ate onions okay raw cooked I was never a fan of garlic okay those are staples in like everything I cook now okay I love garlic I cook with garlic in just about everything I love the fragrance of garlic and I do I still don't like raw onions except for like scallion green onion but I prefer them cooked. I like them caramelized. Um, I like them with a little bit of a crunch. But that transpired over time. And as my taste buds began to evolve and grow, and as I was willing to try new foods and things like that, that's when I got to discover that, um, you know, I was missing out. I actually liked a lot more than I realized. And it also helped in my cooking and building flavor profiles. But let me get back to childhood. So my mom would cook two meals. And I had an awareness at a very 
um, early age. It's just the grace on my life. It's not like I was looking for it. I just had like an understanding of, you know, the situation we were in. We didn't grow up with wealth. We grew up in poverty. And we relied on government assistance, food stamps, WIC. Um, if y'all remember that, I don't know if they still have all of that. I'm from New York, so I know each place is different. And we actually had like a book growing up so it was like pages you would rip out of a book for the different items right that government cheese that came in a block it was a block of cheese if it was even cheese we we will probably never know what it was but it was a thick block (laughs) and you would cut off the slices yourself right and so I remember sitting at the table and um I I was anemic when I was younger and so that's the iron deficiency. And so I would be, you know, cold. And my mom also had anemia um, as well. And so she tried to give me things that would build my iron, which is all the things I still to this day, okay? Do you hear me? Liver is not it for me at all. I don't think I will ever eat liver. I don't care how you prepare it. I don't care what famous chef you are. I don't think I will ever eat liver. <laughs> okay? Now, notice I said think. Liver ain't it. Um, I never really liked seafood or fish, but go figure all the iron rich foods I did not like. Spinach, no, that ain't it. So I remember sitting at the table for hours, right? Because, you know, she cooked the food. It's like you had to eat what was cooked, you had to eat what was in front of you. And, um, you know, her doing her best as a mom and a parent to make sure that I got what I needed, you know. Um, to combat the deficiency but yeah that wasn't that wasn't my perspective (laughs) so I remember like hiding food in places um I would hide food in like a napkin I would throw food out the window do you hear me because there was a window in the kitchen that we were in in this particular house it was on the second floor and I would feed food to the dog okay Uh, food would just disappear in places not in my stomach (laughs) but it would disappear in places and so it's like I had the idea well I can learn how to cook I like learning things and it's like well let me you know learn how to cook and prepare the food how I like it and then that will take the burden off of her cooking Then we wouldn't have her making two meals and we wouldn't have me sitting at the table now this is me as a young child probably about 10 years old and you know I can eat what I like (laughs) especially meat wise that's what it was mostly the meat and so I really loved veggie meat um and so I ate a lot of that growing up I was kind of vegan vegetarian um ish (laughs) vegan vegetarian ish growing up and I, I can't even say that I ate what I ate and I ate what I liked growing up let's just put it like that because there was this chicken pita pocket dish with broccoli that my mom used to make and cheese that was just fire um to me back then growing up and probably if I remade it myself it would probably still taste good because it was a childhood memory and so the point is had that not been sparked in me right had that idea not come about or just even her acknowledging that you know I had a desire to learn and to cook and to cultivate that because some parents could have been like you don't belong in the kitchen and this is not a place for a child but you know she would show me things in the kitchen um I did a lot of things early on I'm just realizing that now even like laundry I did a lot my laundry and stuff a lot you know earlier than some of my siblings and I just had the desire to help that's what I guess it came from it stemmed from wanting to help all right I don't know where it cut off at but we're just gonna bridge these two segments together the devil is alive. It's just totally cut off in the middle of me talking. Um, but anywho, that desire to help and to relieve the burden in a way that I knew how or I could, right? It was like, let me make myself useful.
because it's not like I can make money and help out in that capacity. Um, And it's like, let me use, right, or utilize, right, this is me speaking as an adult, what I have to offer and bring to the table or or contribute to my family um, in that respect. And so that's how I started cooking. Hmm. That's and then out, over time it just evolved and it grew. And I used to binge watch cooking shows. I used to love watching Top Chef and all of those cooking shows that they would have. Um, and like when these shows like first like piloted and came out, I would watch and just get so inspired. And then even like as I got older and even when I went to college and. I discovered Indian food. Oh my goodness. It was this place called Nawab Indian Cuisine in West Virginia of all places. And it was like a chain restaurant within that region, like Virginia, West Virginia. And I forgot what other place because I Googled it after college. And that was the first time I had mango lassi. And that was the first time I had um, tandoori chicken. <sighs> And I was like, what? I've been missing out on all of this good food. And even like my, you know, friends in college, they knew me. When we went to travel <laughs> to like track meets and we would get meal money, right, for our meals, they would save their money and eat at McDonald's. I was sitting there like out back. I was going to the restaurants and, you know, eating like food, food. And even moving into the dorms wow thank you holy spirit because it's all like coming back to me even moving into the dorms when i went to college my mom sent me a care package with possum pans because she knew i cooked and the dorm that i was in called buskirk had a kitchen like this was predestined okay the lord orchestrated all of this because i was like yes y'all i need to cook y'all can eat this cafeteria food i need to make my own food (laughs) And so I got the best of both worlds in college, which was great. And then shortly after that, I moved off campus into an apartment. So I really got to cook. And that was a blessing, too, because I got to gather the teammates together and cook meals for us. We had a breakfast one time. Um, I cooked during the holidays for us that were there during Thanksgiving time. And, um, yeah, I didn't realize, like, the support for that that I had then. Um because it's like I don't even think they realized how much support that was like my dad got me a flavor wave it was right I think it was called a flavor wave and it was like this portable kind of like plug-in oven that could cook stuff um and it was supposed to like be healthier and drain the fat and I actually cooked the turkey in that it was either turkey or chicken probably probably both knowing me in that flavor wave at college (sighs) Um, and yeah, I've cooked, yeah, I did cook chicken in there. I made this like chicken with this mustard sauce. That was the first time I did that. And that like, you know, sparked and continued and fueled and fed like my creativity and me cooking and putting together dishes and putting together things that um, were flavorful and comforting. And that was like the premise of me cooking, the fellowship and the community and sharing love through a meal you know and it's like it's been sticking with me for a while like it's like the lord has been like pounding and honing this in um that it's in kings right with elijah elisha (laughs) i was mixing two up what do you have in your house what do you already have that the Lord has given you? What gifts has he placed inside you and given you that you already have that will bring him glory? That will use that will be used to spread the love of him in ways that you might not necessarily think. And if anyone that cooks knows this, usually how you cook and the um the joy and the whatever you're bringing to that kitchen area, right? I know I've made meals and I've been in a crappy mood and it was just to get through and to make something to eat. When I'm in those kind of moods, it just, just, I just cannot flow in the kitchen. And usually what I make comes out disastrous. It reflects, you know what I'm saying? What's flowing out of my heart into my hands is reflected in the food that I prepare. 
and it usually comes out trash. Still edible, but for me and my standards, it comes out trash. Sometimes I've had to throw stuff out and just like completely start over and just like refocus. And usually when I'm cooking from that place of joy and love and I'm in the flow with the Holy Spirit, cooking with the Holy Spirit be lit, I'm telling you. Um, And I'm just in that vein of creativity and like, this can go with this and this can go with this. Let me try this. Let me taste this. Let me see how this turns out. It is always fire. Do you hear me? Always. I shock myself sometimes. And then even times when I cook something and it's not like up to my, right? We're usually our harshest critic. And it's usually not up to my standards. And I'm like, okay, I can do this better. I can do this. I can change this. I can tweak this. I can make it better. And so that has been like really resonating strong. And I I know it's not only for me. It's like, what did the Lord place inside of you? What gifts, what talents, what abilities did he place inside of you to be instruments in this earth to bring him glory? Because that's why he placed them inside of you. You didn't give the gifts yourself. That's impossible. You can't give yourself gifts, okay? Um, You can't like go back in time and say, I wanted to be born to this family. I wanted to have this talent, this ability, and this skill. I was going to do this. this. You can't do that. We that's not. We can't do that. That's impossible. <laughs> and so, obviously, in the grand scheme and grand design of things, that's how you know it's God. He's the one that placed it inside of you. If that's the case, everyone would be good at the exact same thing. We would be like robots. Just walking around all doing the same thing. That's whack. That's boring. We don't serve that kind of God. We serve a God that's creative, that has placed different, um, you know, gifts and talents. Like, just like if you look down the bread aisle, forgive me from all over the place, but the thoughts are flowing. Just like when you look down the bread aisle, how many different brands of bread are there? How many different kinds of wheat bread are there? Honey wheat, regular wheat, whole grain wheat, wheat with the, the, you know, the grains and nuts in them, wheat with the little oats on the top of the crust. There are so many different breads in the bread aisle manufactured by different people, okay? But they cater to a specific audience. The bread I might like, you might not like. And guess what? There's a bread for you. You see what I'm saying? So it's the same way with us in the gifts and the talents that he placed in us. Who I'm a call to and who I'm assigned to, you know, that's where he placed the gifts that I have to release. Just like somebody might be drawn to a certain ministry. There might be similarities, but they'll have a different message. They'll have a different sound. They'll have a different, you know, take on whatever it is that the Lord had placed in them to release. And so... Yeah, I just want that to like sit and resonate with y'all because it's been speaking to me so profoundly and just so loud. Um, And this is why you don't have to compete because just like I have an ability and gift to cook, someone might else not have that ability or gifting, but they have a gift or talent somewhere else that I might need or might be blessed from, right? And so that's why we don't we don't need to compete. We don't need to tear anyone else down. Um, what I have called to build is what I've called been called to build. You might not necessarily be part of that vision or that plan or that design, which is fine because you're called to build something else. You're called to build somewhere else, right? We don't all live in the same state. We live in different states. We are called to be, you know, to different places and different streams and just it's ooh, it's just so it's just it's so good because God is so good and he is perfect in all of his ways and he is so intentional and so just amazing like you cannot out create the creator you cannot out wisdom <laughs> the wisest of all right um and so a, a saying and something that I've come across for myself is and this is what I live by right and and I'm learning to live by when you think of it in this in this um, mindset the Holy Spirit leads and guides into all truth so I have access to the greatest teacher of all time the teacher of teachers the greatest teacher that ever lived that lives 
okay, because he's alive and moving and, and, and breathing. I have access to the greatest teacher. <laughs> I have access to unlimited wisdom. I have access to godly knowledge and counsel, revelation. I have access to these things. Is, it, is that not like, hello? No? Is it just me that's just catching it? Like we have access, direct access, and that comes from relationship, okay? I want to be led and taught and to rely on the goodness, the grace, the mercy of God, the leading of the Holy Spirit, literally, like Holy Spirit GPS, Holy Spirit everything okay at this point and especially in this time this season in this hour where there is so much deception it's disgusting at this point and the scammers are just all time at an all-time high it's like i got a call the other day and i'm gonna end with this i got a call the other day sometimes i answer these calls just in case i have an opportunity to minister if we get that far that's usually the reason why i answer these calls if I can have an opportunity to present Jesus. <laughs> Other than that, I usually ignore them. And so I answered this call and the man um, was telling me I want a vacation. And did I remember signing up for some kind of reward? And my question was this, because I'm going to make you think. That's a lot of what you know I'm called to do also. I'm just going to propose questions to you to make you actually sit and think if you do, if you take the time and just do it over and actually do some introspection and self-reflection. My question was simple. If you could tell me my name, since you called me, you should know who you're speaking to. I just asked him to tell me my name. (laughs) And the call ended. (laughs) And then the call came back and I answered. And he was like, hey, do you remember we were speaking? We got disconnected. And I said, sure. And I asked once again, I said, did you find my name? Like, did you find out who you were calling? And he gave a completely name that was not mine. He said, Tara. And I said, well, I think you have the wrong number because I'm not Tara. I'm not the person that you're looking for. Um, And I thought he had said Carol at first. He might have actually said two different names, but I cannot confirm or deny. I thought I heard Carol and then Tara. Um, Either way, both of those names are not mine. And so, um, you know, you're not looking for me. (laughs) I don't know who you were looking for. If there is a Tara or a Carol out there um, and you did not, uh, some man might be looking for you. Just, you know, be aware and be alert Uh, because that's how the enemy is. He goes looking for you and he goes looking to destroy you and to plant seeds and to present things that can seem good. And who wouldn't want a free vacation? (laughs) Um, You know, but clearly... It was a scam. <laughs> and um, yeah, he was calling from Delta Airlines, according to him. This is how I'm going to tell you. I knew it was a scam. Um, he was calling from Delta Airlines or he was calling as if I won something from Delta Airlines. Now, this is like I said, how the enemy works. I do have a Delta Airlines account. OK, uh, I signed up to be a frequent flyer. I have a, you know, an account with Delta Airlines. Um. <clears throat> Never signed up for, for anything, though. Just put that out there. I didn't never signed up for anything to win any vacation or anything like that. Um, or any sort of promotion along those lines. Never have, have done that. Um, so, he mentioned that in um, winning the trip. He couldn't tell me where, who, I'm sorry. He couldn't tell me my name. I had to pause and um, retrace my, my, my thought and where I was going. And the number that came up the first time, here we go. Thank you, Holy Spirit. The caller ID that came up the first time was different than the caller ID that came up the second time. The first caller ID, I don't even remember what it said, but it didn't say Delta. The second caller ID that came up actually said Aetna Dental, which is dental insurance. Why would a representative from Delta Airlines 
call from caller ID Etna Dental informing me of a free vacation that I want. And I know people get taken advantage of by scams. And I know people are deceived, especially they target, especially the elderly, um, you know, community, the senior population, um, those that are not as tech savvy or their memory might not be as, you know, intact or strong. And so sometimes it's easier for them to be manipulated and taken advantage of. And so just be on guard and be alert. And this is why it's so important to be led by the Holy Spirit and to ask him, you know, and test the spirits. Is this you? Is this where you're leading me? Is this the direction or path that you're taking me? Do I need to listen to this person? Do I need to engage in this? Do I need to stop? Do I need to fall back? Do I need to pursue? You know what I'm saying? Uh, So yeah, I'm going to end right there because I'm hot and I'm hungry. I'm ready to go. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> but I love you guys. Thanks for bearing with me. I know it's been a minute. I hope you enjoyed this episode. I am sorry that I got cut off in the middle of what I was saying. But like I said, I'm recording from a new location. And I wanted to try this out and see how this go and how it flowed. Um, and so, yeah, I'm out and about. And this was nice to do. Oh, I miss you guys. Be blessed, y'all. All right. <laughs>